Hello. Uh, out of caution, I'm making this presentation remotely. Uh, I'm sorry not to be there in person. I hope you'll understand and forgive me. Be assured that should I be chosen, I'll hop right on down there uh, to meet you all and to get a clear idea of what would really sing uh, in front of Moses Cone Hospital. Uh, let me uh, just share my screen and we'll do this. Okay, uh, I've, I've learned what I can about the Moses Cone Hospital uh, and the sculpture site, uh, and I'm, I'm really impressed. I would love to try to create something wonderful for you. Uh, over the years, I have spent uh, a bit of time in North Carolina. Uh, this is my sister's wedding in Asheville, uh, where she lived for about 10 or 15 years, and I visited many times. Uh, this big guy, uh, six foot, eight inches to be exact, uh, is my engineer, Nick Gertz, and his family. Uh, they live in Candler, which is near Asheville. The museum in Raleigh uh, had an exhibition on the centennial of the Wright brothers' first flight and included work that I had made uh, from stuff at the scrapyards of Boeing uh, and Grumman Aerospace. About 30 years ago, uh, Sika invited me to Winston-Salem to kick off their Artist in the Community program. They wanted me to work with some local company uh, and having just quit smoking when my wife got pregnant, I chose R.J. Reynolds. I wandered around the state for about three weeks, uh, visiting tobacco fields, drying sheds, auctions, you name it. And I, I made a show called Oral History. Uh, it included lots of things made with tobacco. Uh, the key part though, was a group of humidors, uh, each held the number of cigarettes I estimated I had smoked in each of the 30 years I had smoked. I don't really know Greensboro, uh, but I hope to. Uh, it looks like a wonderful town. Uh, I do have works in the collection of the Weatherspoon, uh, including this piece that's on display now uh, in their ex exhibition entitled Ostensibly So. Uh, and they own this little piece, which I made during my year at the American Academy in Rome. The last few decades, I've been making a lot of public artworks, uh, too many to share with you. Uh, but I have to show you uh, this one, since it's just a few blocks from my home. Uh, it's an upside down olive tree uh, in the in the market at Grand Central Terminal, uh, dripping uh, with thousands of Swarovski crystals. This sculpture of the yearling uh, was originally shown in Central Park. It was in People Magazine uh, and it got a walk by on Law and Order. Uh, then it moved to the children's wing of the Denver Public Library uh, where the kids look out at it during story time. Uh, it's been embraced by the city in all sorts of ways. Uh, my son Jackson grew up thinking that the sculpture was his idea. Uh, I told him the truth when he reached 25. I based this sculpture in Kansas City on Rodin's The Thinker. Uh, which is outside their uh, art museum. Uh, they're life-size casts and they look like bronze, uh, but they're actually fiberglass, which lights up like a cathedral window at night. Uh, uh, that's Jackson again, thinking about it. This piece in Scottsdale is a house of cards made from three giant cathedral doors, truly massive. And inside, 
They're lined with stainless steel mirrors to create a walk-in kaleidoscope. And at the top, they come together to create a virtual geodesic sphere. A couple of years ago, they rebuilt this bridge in Virginia Beach. And on their pedestrian walkway, I made this piece with actual canoes cut out in an intricate filigree pattern. It's really loved uh, and it's beautiful. Of course, each of these works has a story uh, too long to tell here. Like this piece made with an actual bus in uh, Reno, Nevada. Um, but they all have stories of interaction with the community, uh, local importance and so forth. Uh, and I can't tell you that here because it's, <laughs> I just have 20 minutes. Uh, the Indianapolis Speedway uh, wanted to give something to the city on their 50th anniversary. Uh, so I made this work that has flaps that blow in the breeze. Excuse the low res, <laughs> but there it is. It gives you some idea. Uh, Goodyear Ballpark in Arizona is the spring training home for the Cleveland and Cincinnati teams. Uh, I made the Ziz, a copy of Brancusi's Bird in Space, uh, but 60 feet, six inches tall, uh, the distance from the pitcher's mound to home plate. And I gave it seams like a baseball. And it's become a meeting place uh, and a beloved landmark of the city. The river, war, the river Walk in San Antonio is a wonderful WP era feature of the city. Uh, some years ago, they extended it up the mile, up the river a mile or so. And where it goes under I-35, I proposed a school of goldfish. Then the people there, taught me about the long-eared sunfish. Uh, and that was that. Uh, they're truly Texas-sized, about seven feet long. Uh, and every night, uh, crowds go out to watch the lighting of the fish. Last month, I saw, installed a piece in Arlington, Virginia, made from this actual wind turbine blade. It rests on a base covered with coins. The neighborhood there, the Columbia Pike, is so rich in families from all over the globe that they call it the world in a zip code. And the neighbors there dug into their drawers uh, and gave us the 5,000 coins from 117 countries uh, that decorate the base. I've done a few works in hospitals. Uh, it's been shown in study after study that art in hospitals has a measurable effect. So these works are especially satisfying for me. The Penn Hospital in Philadelphia wanted something of mine uh, and I suggested uh, this work that greets people when they enter the building. Uh, it appears uh, to be made of bottles filled with milk. This is the beautiful uh, Levine Children's Hospital uh, down in Charlotte. Uh, the hospital is so cool that their window washers dress up as superheroes. The lobby has a six foot tall wall of windows so I made this stainless steel frame more than 100 feet long uh, that we loaded up with uh, 10,000 crystals from every, of every shape and color, uh, making a treasure trove over the lobby and swooping up to the ceiling. And there's a plane going by, I hope it's not too noisy. Uh, 
I thought I would talk at some length uh, about my work at the New Children's Hospital at NYU in New York. Um, this is Neil Lewin, my doctor for 40 years. Uh, his office is right there uh, and my apartment is there. And the new NYU hospital building is here. Uh, to cite it for you for location, this is the United Nations building. And here's the 36th Street Ferry Terminal. Uh, by the way, NYU Hospital has its own ferry. And here's the east side heliport. And right behind it is the hospital. Um, and their new building uh, is all single patient rooms uh, and state of the art operating rooms. And the Hassenfeld Children's Hospital is a building within the building uh, with its own entrance and lobby. Uh, this is the terrace of my apartment uh, and that's the new building. Uh, this is all of NYU Hospital. Um, they wanted a sculpture right here uh, and they wanted it to be an iconic sculpture, not too much pressure. Uh, the interior designer was Lee Skolnick, who's done uh, museums, uh, including the 9-11 Memorial Museum and other hospitals. And he came up with the theme of landmarks of New York. And taxis just popped into my mind. This is how most of the kids uh, would be arriving at the hospital. The Hassenfeld family, which started uh, the Hasbro Toy Company was a major donor for the hospital. And their matriarch, Sylvia Hassenfeld played a big role. Uh, she was the same age as my mother, uh, who was also Sylvia. Uh, and I really took a shine to her. So I thought I would use toys somehow. Uh, and stuffed animals were a natural. Uh, they just seem ubiquitous in children's hospitals uh, for the comfort they give. And I came up with this, a toy dog holding an actual taxi as if it were a toy. I loved the irony of a toy thinking an actual taxi was its toy. I played around with it. Uh, I imagined it as an emblem for the hospital. I even made cookies to give out at the presentation. It was a competition like this uh, and I won the competition. Everybody loved it. And so we set out to make the actual thing. Uh, then just a few days later, Catherine Mano, the head of pediatrics wanted to see me. She thought it was too childish. At first, I thought she was thinking about the older patients like this 18 year old who had a heart lung replacement or transplant uh, or this 17 year old kidney recipient. I had addressed this in my presentation, uh, thinking about teenagers and their own need for comfort and their strong sense of irony. I was convinced that kids, that teenagers would love this. Uh, but more than the older kids, she was actually thinking about the staff, the doctors and the other medical professionals that work there and the medical students. She told me about the Children's National uh, Hospital in DC, where some of her colleagues actually felt diminished by their logo. So I gave it some thought and I played with the idea of an actual dog. I decided on a Dalmatian. Uh, this was an easy choice, uh, not just 
of fire department icon, uh, but a personal favorite of mine. And finally, I came around to this. Uh, we got an actual taxi, a Prius. Uh, this became the taxi number uh, and I named the dog Spot. She has the sort of attributes you would hope for in your doctor, patience, concentration, skill, uh, and sweetness. And there is the sense that the impossible can happen here. Then at night, the headlights uh, and the taxi lights come on. The hospital is full of New York landmarks uh, and this painted glass mural in the lobby uh, by Charles Fazzino includes Spot right along with all the other city landmarks. The Statue of Liberty in the lobby uh, is made of Legos and Spot is right outside the door. The building is at the corner of First Avenue and 34th Street, a very busy intersection. So everybody knows it, everybody's seen the piece. And it's of course become very much photographed. It's really become a selfie spot. And it's sort of an anchor for the hospital's pet therapy program. And of course, uh, there are toy spots and homages of every type. This is the canine officer that patrols the neighborhood. Uh, and he taught this, his dog this trick. Not a Photoshop, that's a dog with an actual toy taxi. This boy, Brandon, uh, six years old, had a malignant brain tumor. With his sister's help, he drew and sent me this picture and we became friends. Uh, it's been really touching to learn how much Spot has meant to him and to his family uh, as he's come back to the hospital again and again uh, for treatments and diagnostics. His sister, who just 13, turned 13, started a charity uh, that gives money to the hospital. Donors who give $100 or more get a picture of Spot uh, that I autograph. Uh, Brandon, by the way, is 10 years old now and is doing just great. When COVID hit, I thought Spot should have a mask of her own. So we made one, uh, NYU purple, of course, uh, and it's meant a lot to the staff and to everyone. Brandon, uh, by the way, had an MRI in June, all clear, uh, and Spot is now a cover girl. So I think you can sense what this sculpture has meant to me. I have no idea what I would do at Moses Cone Memorial, but I would dive into it with all my heart and soul. Thank you. <laughs>